Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about the Synology Solutions Exhibition 2024 here in Taipei. I'm here in what I'm probably going to be referring to as the Computex Void uh, to just quickly summarize everything that we saw at the exhibition from Synology. It's going to be going through everything and there should be chapters along the bottom of the screen if you want to highlight straight away a particular area of interest for you. We're also going to be doing all of the YouTube shorts uh, on individual things that really stood out as well as articles linked in the description so you may or not already know about that but do check that out and some of the standout elements we will be making dedicated videos on those but this is the joint summary of everything we learned at the exhibition there and I think a number of you that have been following Synology uh, particularly when we were sort of previewing and talking a little bit more about what we were hoping to see if you are you know home you are prosumer even I would argue small business it's not going to be a huge amount for you unless you're into a surveillance or some of the applications for AI that we're going to be talking about later on. I think it would be fair to say that Synology really, really focused on enterprise and larger scale business for the majority of the exhibition there. For good or for bad, but I will say the enterprise stuff that was on show was pretty darn good. I've got questions about pricing and the structure of some of those uh, that they didn't have answers for on the day, but I'm sure those are things that are going to be ironed out very, very soon. But overall, if you are an enterprise user and you want to be into that kind of stuff, there's going to be a lot for you. And I think we should go on to what I would argue is, for me, the big sell, and that is active Protect now. Active Protect and a series of devices that are going to be released alongside it is the DP uh, Data Protection Series, arriving uh, for uh, uh, the initial launch in rack mount fashion in a one, two, and three U configuration. I believe the one U is flash based. It may be based on that uh, 2.5 inch flash model that they released a while ago in the FS series. Um, these are devices that do not arrive with DSM. These arrive with Active Protect. They are uh, pre-populated with Synology storage and are designed to be deployed within 10 minutes. You get hold of them, you run the system, and then from there, uh, instead of uh, this station manager, it arrives with Active Protect, which is predominantly, I would say, it takes elements from other Synology apps, but the main predominant feature I would compare it against is Active Protect. Backup, but it's active backup with a bunch of other features pulled from other apps into this single portal to manage the backups for your business. So where you, you've got a large scale business with lots of different users, Mac and Windows systems there. Maybe some of them are using virtual machines, you know, your Hyper-V, your VMware and the like. Maybe you've got a couple of uh, older style Linux databases out there. And you've got all of this along with Windows and Mac machines in that environment. This is designed to be a target for all of those backups, be they on the local area network and even uh, remote access identities there with deduplication included as well sending all that data to this easy to manage appliance it's designed with a less uh, hands-on with a system admin within your business environment very much not i'm not going to say idiot proof it's no b station but it's certainly a less um, IT frictional setup experience from what they were telling me. Also on top of that with the deduplication affecting all of the connected clients. So in other words, if you have a bunch of Windows machines, the same files from those, be the OS files or company files, will only be backed up once, but a record kept of all of those locations. But on top of that, you can have multi-site deployment of this system, which means that you can deploy multiple DP systems across your business, whether that is that you've got multiple shops or huge offices in Tokyo, in New York, in London, you can have all of these separated, a DP system, and each of those all connected, all backing up to a centralized DP system, which in itself has multi-site duplication, uh, which means that even those regularly uh, backed up files from all of those different locations only one copy needs to be kept there in the uh, uh, kind of target backup area and then on top of that it's got things like write once read many support there you've got versioning you've got object file folder um, restoration which could be done by the clients with the client application or by a system admin to oversee that with that single portal interface we will be doing a dedicated video with a lot more features that may already be live but i would argue active protect was kind of their big focus alongside one other very enterprise appliance. It is worth highlighting though that when it comes to pricing, things are still a little vague at this time. The Active Protect series is going to arrive with all of your storage, but it does sound like there is going to be long-term licensing of the software 
down the road. There isn't a huge amount that is known on that, and I believe that's still being debated internally, but do keep in mind that the Active Protect appliance does sound like it's going to have some sort of licensing model based behind it, either on day one or maybe a year or two down the line. Now, let's talk about the other enterprise-led rack mount appliance, this time focusing specifically on high storage capacity that Synology were talking about at their event, and this is the G. S series. The GS series is designed to be an incredibly scalable solution, arriving in individual nodes that apparently will be available unpopulated, but you will have to use Synology storage media inside them. These allow you to scale up to 96 individual rack mount nodes per cluster, scalable up to a potential 20 petabytes of storage which is huge now these are all going to be managed by a tailored and first party synology switch there at the top this isn't them spinning off into a whole switch series this is a dedicated management switch that is designed with 100 gig nicks and more to handle this entire appliance these enormous 96 node clusters at 20 petabytes again we are talking mega hyper super duper storage Uh, it wasn't completely clear whether these are going to be running a more streamlined version of DSM, much like we've seen on the Universal or UC, uh, UC controlled NAS devices. But nonetheless, this was a very impressively scaled solution. And until they nail down really what that's going to include, whether it is going to be not unlike Active Protect as a target for storage, or some of the fully featured options of DSM, such as surveillance, such as file management drive and more, is still yet to be seen. And while I hang around here in the Computex void, let's talk about a new product that was there. This was incredibly TBC, incredibly WIP. This is a rack mount NVMe flash solution that Synology are working on. They made it abundantly clear that this is not a solution that's ready today. It's so far from release, I would say 2025, maybe even mid-year. They just weren't able to confirm. It seems to be a hybrid hard drive and NVMe flash solution. The whole thing built on SAS connectivity for those drives. So it wasn't really clear whether these individual bays on this system, be it eight or 12 bay, I believe it was a 12 bay. We weren't, I wasn't able to remove the front panel there. Um, it didn't seemingly indicate whether these were going to be say three and a half inch trays uh, with SAS on the back, but then an NVMe to SAS adapter there, or whether it was gonna be pure you, you know, U.2 or perhaps E1S injection method for those uh, NVMe SSDs. It was clearly indicated as a flash solution and still very far from release or any kind of formal announcement, but it's still nice that they were showing that they're working on NVMe flash systems in their portfolio because it has always been a glaring hole in the majority of their business-led portfolio that with everyone else talking about flash right now, Synology was starting to look a bit old hat, focusing predominantly on SATA SSD systems on their flash station series. So I want to see more on this and I would have liked to have seen the desktop version, but nonetheless, this is still a positive step, fingers crossed. Next up, let's talk about surveillance. Now, this went into two different legs when it came to what Synology were revealing and showing off during the event. The first one was new cameras to add to their existing lineup. There was an 8 megapixel bullet style camera and a new fisheye lens camera giving you 360 degrees of coverage in your surveillance station setup. Now, this may sound super boring, and the 8 megapixel bullet is so so fine. You know, I think it had optical zoom, it wasn't too clear. But the one I really want to focus on is that fisheye lens camera. The reason being is when they were showing off that lens, not only did you have this kind of ceiling mounted one camera full coverage that we expect from fisheye lens cameras, again, Synology Surveillance Station has always supported numerous fisheye lens cameras already, but it was the fact of the uh, one you could use the integrated edge AI recognition on it, again, for recognizing humans, recognizing vehicles, you know, and drawing intrusion lines, that sort of thing. No people counting, no license plate registration and more. Those are very much a DVA appliance. But on top of that, you could use natively in Surveillance Station uh, the lens of that fisheye camera being broken into four individual recorded 
feeds. Those feeds weren't warped. The uh, uh, reverse fisheye integration meant that each of the lenses could be used to monitor a full separate area of coverage, each with their own drawn lines of effect, edge AI recognition, and more. And it was a very interesting way to deploy one camera, again, license free as a Synology camera, but one camera that allowed you to have four separate individual feeds very convenient and a good way to cover a huge surface area which is a single mounting point there and continuing with surveillance we can talk about the c2 surveillance station platform now we already knew Synology had c2 surveillance as a uh, cloud-based failover for your surveillance cameras we already knew about surveillance station on your physical NASes. it almost seemed inevitable that Synology would go down the road of cameras directly recording to the cloud space there and that's what c2 surveillance station is on the uh, Synology side it is uh, almost like a VM of Synology surveillance station a lighter version of surveillance station with quote unquote the majority of uh, surveillance station applications and services built in along with those edge AI services too and that will allow you to have uh, three new cameras deployed from Synology again the pre-existing lineup of the BC uh, uh, 500 the TC 500 and uh, the CC 400 W but this new cloud surveillance CS version of those cameras and you have to go to those versions and they will directly record to your cloud-based surveillance setup you may use this for smaller remote level deployment of cameras you may use this for setting up cameras in an ad hoc manner in an area like a building site or nonetheless there are going to be lots of users that simply wanted the Synology surveillance station platform but they didn't want to deploy a surveillance NAS. Again, details on the subscription model and the pricing and more is still yet to be uh, confirmed, but nonetheless, it still seemed like an impressive little setup there. And as long as they can down the line integrate perhaps some of the deep video analysis features, the license plate recognition, facial recognition, not just person recognition, but actual face and database stuff, and people counting, then I'll really get into this, but it'll be interesting to see if that becomes just another tier add-on or this is going to be something that just isn't possible because of the huge overhead of having so many users with DVA-led tasks being head headed to cloud-based surveillance. And finally, we can talk about AI integration. Last year, when they had held a partner event during Computex 2023, Synology showed us some of the early signs of them integrating existing uh, language learning models and AI into some of their Synology applications and services. And they've now moved this forward into a more formal setting. Synology's AI console is uh, an app or you know a portal based on Synology NAS um, that's going to be available in DSM. And this portal allows you to add an existing um, service that you've got with your AI um, model of choice, be that ChatGPT, Google Gemini, um, Azure AI, you can add these to this single portal and then from there integrate some of those AI services into your Synology mail, uh, your Synology office applications and apparently down the road Synology chat. Now you are going to have to have an existing subscription with another third party AI. How you feel about that, whether you think Synology should provide you with a license, highly unlikely and I think there's a lot of users that wouldn't like that. But there's going to be other users that go, I don't like the idea of choosing to open up my Synology NAS to these third party learning models. There's a huge degree of trust to keep in mind there. Synology have made it clear, however, that this is completely optional. You're not going to be forced to utilize this. You're not going to form as the backbone of their applications right now. Synology's AI admin console is an optional download. And again, you will have to use your own pre-existing AI LLM account with Google Gemini, ChatGPT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to use these services. And again, if you are going to utilize it, they even rolled in a de-identifier module into the admin console that allows you to supply pre-existing formats of information that you want to make sure that the AI doesn't utilize in Synology Office, in Synology Chat down the road, and Synology Mail. So providing, for example, the format of passports, credit card details, personal identifying dates, addresses, by date of birth and more, all of that can be entered into it to always omit and not utilize that information in the generated results that these AI services within the Synology applications utilize.
But that's really it. The majority of the other things at the show were really examples of things that I'd already seen. There was the 20 terabyte entering into the Synology hard drive media series, which is all fair and well. We want to see those larger hard drives, although, again, they're slightly behind the curve as 24 TB drives have already started rolling out consistently this year. On top of that, there was all of the B station and the B drive entries there, but there was still no mention of a larger scale B station in maybe two or four bays. Um, when asked about the uh, present of perhaps prosumer devices, follow-ups in some of those Ryzen 6 and 8 bay devices, or the 2 and the 4 bay, they weren't really able to comment on that. Now, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Synology and Willing to Bet are still going to very much continue with DSM in this format. I can't see the likes of Active Protect or anything like that replacing it, but it would have been nice to have seen some of those mid-range Synology solutions in 4, 6 and 8 bays as Although some of them are still under two years in their cycle, that doesn't really count for all of them. And devices like the 8-bay and the 6-bay are starting to look a little bit long in the tooth. And I was really hoping to get my teeth into some of those today. But that has been the Synology Solution Exhibition here in Taipei. In the next day or two, perhaps it's already live by the time you watch this, Synology is going to be doing a much more deeper look into their 2024 plans in a video and some stuff they're streaming from their own platforms uh, for about the event that I was at today. So hopefully they'll slip a few extra things in. But what do you guys think? Are you an enterprise user? Are you a large-scale business user that could take advantage of some of the solutions we've talked about today? Maybe you're someone that's already graduating away from some of the SMB and mid-tier storage solutions, and this is music to your ears. Maybe you're a system installer, a Synology partner, and this is exactly what you wanted to hear. I personally quite like the Active Protect series, and the sooner that Synology get on board with Flash servers, the better. But I'm not going to say that everything I saw today was for everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments, and do stay tuned for further updates uh, on the Computex event here in Taipei, along with a few other dedicated videos I'm working on with some of the other brands that we talk about on the channel in NAS and data storage. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.